Well, hello everybody, and welcome back to G-Bears Off-Grid Ways, as it says in the beginning. <coughs> Excuse me. Anyway, I'm out here in the middle of this gigantic atmospheric river that is uh, just pouring rain down all over the place out here and just flash flooding the whole area. As you can see, there's giant waves of water flowing past me. What are you talking about? Anyway, now they say that the rain's going to start sometime uh, 9 a.m. tomorrow and go all the way to 9 p.m. with uh, flash flood warnings in the area and all that kind of stuff. So there's still clouds in the mountains over there a little bit, and uh, the mountains got some decent snow. And that uh, little low-hanging cloud right there on the side of the mountain, those poor people, that's where the... Uh, um, ski resorts are. There's two two ski slopes over there, and uh, they're all fogged in, so I don't think there's anybody doing any skiing right now up there. Anyway, the reason I'm out back here is uh, I was over watching uh, videos and uh, saw Tony and Leanne at uh, doing redneck things off grid. Um, they were working on their solar panel racks and how to mount their solar panels and um, they were using uh, wood to make the the racks and then welding a few parts together here and there and we went through a whole thing on there about how to weld and you know what I'm going to show you something that I came up with and it's pretty easy no welding involved, just uh, self-drilling, self-tapping screws. All right, you can see that right here. Don't pay attention to the broken panel. That's from when uh, we had the hurricane winds come through here and it blew this uh, panel over right up against the, uh, the cabin. Anyway, metal pieces, okay? So these are, all these metal pieces, th these are called um, furrings. And they're kind of a hat-shaped uh, piece of metal. Um, I don't know if you can see it any better here. But yeah, it's flat and then it's hollow up inside and it comes up. And what you do is when, um, when they build uh, metal stud buildings, then they'll strap this um, horizontally along the metal studs and then uh, fasten the wall panels onto this stuff. So it gives it a little bit more strength and rigidity. <clears throat> so this piece of metal, which is just a little channel, I'm pretty sure I got that in um, the electrical department of the store. And these, these uh, channels right here, or the furrings, those come from uh, the uh, where the metal studs are and that stuff. You may not find those at all places. Uh, they might be special order, but I found those at a uh, um, a big box store in Orange County, and they were by the metal studs. So with those hat pieces and these channels. And then using Unistrut, let me get over to where the Unistrut is. You can see it's easier to see. Okay, so this is the Unistrut, and these are in the electrical department. Okay, and you can see where I shot the screw right through the fairing strip here and into right through the, um, the Unistrut, and it holds it together. No welding, okay? Over here, with these channels on the end, I put the uh, screws through the top, going straight down through the, um, I call them hats, but they're furring strips. Okay, so here you can see two on the center. Here's one on this one, and then there's that end channels. So you can set these apart, uh, the unistruts come in 10-foot lengths, 
at Home Depot in the electrical department. And uh, you, you cut those to the um, lengths you need. And then these come in 10 foot lengths also. And if I'm not mistaken, that's a whole, um, almost a whole 10 foot length, if not a whole 10 foot length. But uh, yeah, these are three 100 watt panels, about three foot a piece, uh, three, six, nine. So I think I cut a foot off at the end of them. But uh, makes a perfect one. Now for this set, these are bigger panels. These are 305 watt panels each. And uh, of course they need a little bit more um, area. So I did it with all of this. Now I use the, those angles right there. You can find those in the electrical department of Home Depot and just drill a hole right through the metal pipes and set those through there and you got a pivot. Then these, uh, channels right there those were left over from the uh, side channels that I used on here and I set them up originally there's two holes in each one so I can have my summer angle and my winter angle but then I found out that uh, the angle that they're at right here works two times a year I don't have to move them at all now this originally I made this just to handle four panels but I got such a great deal on these panels back when um, I was in Orange County my friend's uh, electronics store that I went back and got two more of them because I, I figured what the heck you know they're I mean 305 watt panels and I think I paid hundred and seventy five dollars a piece for them so it was a good old days when I had money <laughs> Anyway, um, I got ended up with six of them. So these are in series parallel, um, but that's a that's a whole nother story. But the uh, I I had to do an add-on on here because I only made this rack to go to this point to handle four panels, and that's why the pivot point is in the center of these two panels and not in the center of this panel. If I was going to do it over again, I would do it with the center of this panel. But because the overhang was so long, I used two pieces of the channel right here for legs to help support the weight on this side. There's the unistrut again. And there's a different type of um, self-drilling, self-tapping screw. So this is pretty much very easy and there's no wood involved. And they're strong. They're really, really strong. Now these things, have been sitting out here in 50 mile an hour winds uh, and if not stronger on some of the other days that we had heavy winds and they're still here. Now these wooden ones, these are Harbor Freight panels and uh, I just use some wood for those because they're cheap panels and they're very lightweight. So these are 25 watts each, that makes a 100 watt total the same here. Now I don't have these tied into uh, my good controllers. They're actually on their own separate um, Harbor Freight uh, 20 amp controllers inside the, the room. And yes, those connect to the batteries too, but they're separate, completely separate circuits, just charging the batteries from a different location. Pretty easy. These, these are six 100 watt panels. I got three up on there and then I've got some Harbor Freights on that one. But the, uh, the metal, the way you do the metal, it works out just great. Look at that. Now I had these uh, metal brackets that were great for hold downs. And then in between the two, I used a longer self-drilling, self-tapping screw with a large fender washer to hold two of them down. And it works great. But yeah, get away from the wood and uh, do it this way. Now, because of the high winds here, I put these extra cables on to help hold these things so that when the winds start blowing, they rock like this, but they don't go anywhere. They stay right there. Uh, these have uh, withstood some pretty heavy winds, but real simple. And then the metal poles I first started doing them like that with the uh, the fence post uh, or sign post type 
square stock metal with the holes in it and bolting them down to the concrete and I said what a pain in the butt but I did those before I moved out here I made those in Orange County and brought them up here and then of course I had to bolt them to concrete to hold them down so when I did this one I actually just took some two inch pipe or might even be two and a half inch pipe and uh, just sunk it right in the concrete slab itself so it holds it isn't going anywhere so that's my story and i'm sticking to it thank you for joining me everybody this is, any questions or comments down at the bottom this is g bear looking at another beautiful sunset and signing off